she wasn't going to be there. So. We had enough of this. Okay. okay. We can't go swinging for now. No. Okay. Okay, we can begin. This is the Planning and Zoning Commission for the Village of Vernon Hills. We need to start with a roll call. Chairman Morris. Here. Mr. Gorog. Here. Mr. Mulcrone. Here. Mr. Heidner. Here. Mr. Hesner. Ms. Cotton. Mr. Ballou. Present. We have a quorum. Okay. This evening we have no public hearings. Well, we have a development review of case 13-06, which is a request to amend and improve site and landscaping plan and building elevations to allow for the construction of an enclosed walkway uh, and construction of a data center and expansion of the west parking lot on what is typically referred to as the Rustoleum parcel. And who's going to speak for the petitioner? I am. It's uh, Kurt Hesner. I'm the architect for the project. With me tonight, I have Gene Childers from Rust Oleum Corporation okay. and Robert Judge from the Hesner Corporation as well. He'll be assisting me tonight. Okay. Before we get started, we can note that uh, our Hesner, Scott, who's a commissioner, uh, because of his relationship with you and with the company, is not involved in this at all. Correct. Okay. So with that, you're on. Okay, uh, what you have in front of you is the existing uh, site plan as Russell Oleum Corporation exists today with the West parking lot, uh, the main building and the drives as they exist. Go to the next one, Robert. Uh, this is the revised site plan of the proposed site plan and as you can see on the west end of the building, uh, we have an enclosed walkway that is constructed from the west elevation of the existing corporate headquarters to the west parking lot and below a, the western portion of it as well as to the south of it is a new proposed data center where they plan to move all their data operations out of the main building into that building. We also show to the south of those two improvements an additional parking lot. Uh, that parking lot has 30 parking spaces, as well as to the north of, of it, uh, we have six more parking spaces for a total of additional 36 parking spaces. Uh, this is the site plan. Uh, the one thing that's important to note about the site plan is that uh, where the parking lot is being proposed is a berm right now. We are going to be removing that berm. And as you can see, we're going to be moving it to the south and reshaping it and reconfiguring it. Uh, the height of that berm without the landscape vegetation is roughly about seven feet. Uh, and then the vegetation will, you know, uh, proliferate on top of it and will get taller. Uh, so essentially from the south of Town Line Road, you're not going to see into that parking lot directly. You really won't see it at all. Uh, to the uh, east, uh, along the pond edge, there is some more plantings that are putting in there. It's not quite as high. There will be a glimpse into that lot, and we'll show you those on the renderings. Okay. Can I ask a question at this point? What trees are being taken down on the west side of the pond? I, I think the, the willow that was there came down, but I noticed when I drove by tonight, there are some bigger trees. There's that some are bigger trees down, that are going right? to be taking out, and we're going to balance them out, you know, basically through the code. Uh, okay. to replace all the caliper on, on those trees. But was there anything along the pond of a bigger size that's coming down? Not directly along the edge, is there? Um, it's these three that's right. Oh, all right, that's the existing. That's, that's, I remember seeing those. I couldn't remember if there was anything on the west edge of the pond. I think it's further east on the pond. If you go up to the tops, point to those two up there. Those two are existing as well. Oh, and well. they remain or are they coming up? They're remaining. Okay. The yeah. three down here are relocated. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, we, we're showing this just for civil purposes so you understand it. The diagonal line that goes through that New South parking lot is the existing drainage system that comes across and goes into the pond itself. What we're doing is, if you see the, uh, the where he's pointing to the existing hydrocarbon basin coming down, coming across, and going over to the next basin and into the pond. That's how this whole area will be drained, you know, south into the south parking lot itself. Uh, it also, the great difference between the two, so you're aware of that, the west lot and I call the south lot, that's the west lot and the south lot, highest difference is about eight feet. So there will be a retaining wall holding that portion of it up with a railing system on top of it. 
where, where you're pointing now, is that a retaining wall? So to get to the new parking lot on the <clears> south, you have to drive through the drive. You can't go through the big parking lot and get to the little parking lot. Correct. 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 You have to drive in and go to the little parking lot. That's right. Okay. That's right. You go mm -hmm. under the new walkway system, you'll drive into there. The walkway, show them where the walkway is proposed there. I know this is not the right plan, right? but just show it to them anyhow, where, the, where we're putting it, in there for the fire. Yeah, we're, we're, up yeah, further. That's where the grade walkway is coming in across. Take it from the driveway all the way up to the west lot. Yeah, let's go, there. Yeah, let's go back to the last one. Okay, this is, that's how the, the uh, walkway will be from here yeah. up like this. And that will be the one on grade. Then the new constructed walkway, which is straight and flat going in the building, is the constructed structure right there. Is, is the generator, point to the generator, is it, oh, it's right? Right there. Right there, okay. What's north? The north is the cooling towers for the building. Okay. That's a pit that's about 25 to 30 feet deep. Okay. Okay. Keep going, go past. Uh, this is the lower level plan. Uh, as you can see up to the right, those are where the columns are that's going to support the walkway as it's going over the top of the driveway itself. And as you come in uh, to the facility, there's a corridor. Going through the vestibule, there's a corridor. And then it goes uh, basically to the, the, the pumps and clean agent room, which is the fire protection for that room as well as the water protection. Going into the store room, electric room, and then basically the data center itself, which will have a, a raised floor. The floor will be recessed in there, and it'll be all one level, but that's where we do it. So the covered walkway over the driveway, uh -huh. this may have been in what you sent us, and I didn't see it's it. It's okay. Will a semi be able to fit under that? No, no. It's, it's got eight foot six clear. It's only for cars. So any, because any semis that show up would have to be unloaded then in the driveway or on the street? Go back to the, go back to the plant. Okay, see the parking spaces up at the top? Yep. Uh, really, the, we don't really necessarily get semis, but we do get uh, panel trucks. Well, uh, they do sometimes get mm, semis by mistake. I, yeah, but they don't go that far in. Okay. But, but, but this issue here is that those are set up such that the truck can go in park kind of bring it in bring it in like you'd be driving in off the street come in you park there those are 20 uh 26 feet by nine spaces so they're bigger and then they would back up and then go back up and out can i ask gina a question sure so when you load this uh, uh truck for the sales meeting a semi where would you put that's not a panel truck normally no, that's a regular moving truck. What we would do is we would back down from the uh, Hawthorne Parkway side. Okay. And then uh, we would stage it uh, maybe about 5 to 10 feet inside uh, the Hawthorne uh, roadway edge. And then it would all load in through that side there. And then we'd, we'd take all that stuff, that material that's comes up. out the fire exit. Okay. And then out the that's sidewalk. That's right. I'm right, just curious. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's go back to where we were. Okay, let's go to the walkway plan. Uh, walkway plan, uh, you can see it's, it's a long glazed walkway from the original main building all the way out to the west parking lot. It does have steps coming down to make the grade difference. And then go back up above on that landing. It also has a door out. And the top of the roof of the data center is going to be a paver, uh, kind of an entertainment spot. Railings, stainless steel railings around the perimeter of it. Yes? I have, sir. For um, any accessible parking, where, where is the current accessible parking? Current accessible parking are eight spaces, and they are below the building and meet the requirement near the accessible entrances to the building itself. Okay, so those are maintained and... Right. Okay. Is there, well, is there any issue with the height of the bridge over the pavement with an accessible van? No. Okay. Eight foot six clear at the tight point. Okay. We're going to get to the data center later, the, the interior of the data center? 
We can go back. It's the slide. Did we go by it already? Yeah, we did. Okay, I just have a question. Okay, let's go back. So now, see, the data center portion is down there underneath the roof there. Right, and there there will actually be people working in there, or is it just? Most of the time, you know, the building is designed for equipment. There okay. will be people that go in and have to service the equipment, but, but it's not considered an occupied space. All right, because I was going to ask about restrooms and stuff like that. Right. The, the, uh, the building itself qualifies for that, and since it's not occupied space, right, we don't have to meet the code, right. as well as uh, the, the walkway itself is a very, very large vestibule. So but there will be no workstations in there where people are there is assigned work area? If you look at the top in the storeroom, you see like one chair. There is there's one bench position there. But again, it's coming in, it's dealing with a specific issue and not it's not a permanent work position. Okay. Okay. Okay, one more question. Okay. Do fire trucks fit under the, the walkway? They do not. How's Santa Claus gonna get there? <laughs> He's going to use he's going to use that sidewalk. <laughs> no, but they but it's okay with the fire department. Yeah, the fire. Well, let's go back to the side plan again. Uh, the discussion came about you know the trucks would have to park up on the upper landing right where we say in the western lot there, mm -hmm. over by the entrance, mm -hmm. oh. and go further down. No, go go up to the first row. No, first row of the west lot. West lot. Yeah, straight down the aisle. They're going to park in that particular area. As you see that sidewalk, that was their access to get down if they have to, and to go into the, 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 uh, the new parking lot itself. So the path to travel to the new parking lot, Robert showed that. Coming down, they right through there. You can fight a fire that way? Yeah, you can get people down there. Okay. Say that again? Does the fire, I mean, the fire department could fight a fire in the building if need be. I mean, they're oh, not really sure. getting, all right, just check. And I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're not going to create a situation here where well, I know they that. can't. And anyway, they're still going, a truck, engine, um, or other suppression type vehicle would not pull down that driveway adjacent to the building okay. in its current configuration. They don't want to be close to it in case something happens okay. that could drop debris or part of the right. building on it. So they would actually attack the fire from the front, um, from the upper level, and also from Route 60. And then potentially, if they needed to, from Hawthorne Parkway. Um, ambulance access, I, I had a long conversation. Ambulance access going in the front door. Um, so, um, no, good questions. And, uh, um, and the build, building's also fully sprinkled. So that's a, that's a good thing, too. Right, Gene? Yeah, it's fully sprinkled. It also has a clean agent suppression system in the data portion of it, and so is the walkway. Okay, let's go back. Okay, and the next slide is the roof. So essentially you're seeing no units on the roof of the walkway system itself, nor the data center. It's all intrinsic. It's all inside. And the two condensing units are... Right there. Now, Robert, are those two for the walkway? Correct. Those two are the walkway because those are evaporative coolers that will be in the ceiling. And then those over there are for the, uh, the condensers for the data center, for the crack units on the inside. And those are new, correct? Those are all new, yes. We could, we could fit those three into the pit that was for the cooling tower. We could not get the other ones in, in that. There wasn't enough room. Will there be any uh, furniture, like permanent furniture, on top of the roof deck? No. They'll bring it out when they need it. And then they'll break it down and take it back in. Okay, let's go. That's, that's the planning. Let's go to the, uh, the perspectives. This perspective is uh, looking from the west parking lot straight head on, show, point to the entrances of the enclosed glazed walkway system. It's designed to look like the Rust-Oleum building. Uh, the materials, as we show here, these are the curtain wall frames. Can I turn this? Nope. Don't open it up too far. I've already been warned. Yeah. Okay. This is the curtain wall mullion color frame to match existing building. These are the panels themselves. Stainless steel hand railings that are on the roof deck. And then we have three or we have four beams that come out. And on that entrance, you see those four beams. 
and that has a glass uh, cover over the walkway canopy. So it's very minimalistic looking. That's going to look really nice. I think it's going to be real sharp. It's a similar detail that we did down when we did the UAW building where they had their courtyard and we had the, the curtain wall frame and then we had the uh, frames came out of the glass curtain wall system and held up these glass canopies so it looked nice. Kurt, to the right, yes. Can I interrupt? I'm sorry. Can you explain from this viewpoint how you get access to the lower level of the data center, the actual room, and then to the roof? Okay. Uh, I can't do it from this particular view. Right. <laughs> The access to the roof is actually from the inside of the enclosed walkway above the stairs. So you walk down in one and you walk up for the other, is that right? Yeah. And then when you walk around the condensing units and you go down, your access is actually below this walkway into the data center. And I'll show you that in another, another position. What's the use of the roof other than a roof? Uh, the, use, the use of the roof is just essentially a, a patio. For entertainment or eating lunch or eating lunch or an employee you know event <clears throat> those kind of things and then you see the uh, it's a reinforced concrete structure because it is essentially a hardened bunker for this data center and then you have these stainless steel railings around the outside and the perimeter of the building of the the deck itself okay this is looking at it from, well, this one's looking at it from the north. And this is uh, when you go down the drive and you go down below, we're going to have, uh, what, do, what do we call those bars again? Uh, warning, like detection. A detection bar. So when they come through so the trucks understand that they can't go through and they won't hit our nice new walkway. Uh, it's a glass curtain wall. And uh, you see down on the right-hand side the existing cooling tower. We've had to thread that between the... Uh, basically the generator and the cooling tower to get it into the west to the lots of the building. Up above is from the uh, northwest corner looking back at it. You can see the walkway system as it goes over and attaches into the existing building. And it's in front of the cooling tower and the condensing units. Okay. That's like when you go into a parking ramp and it advises people of a height limitation. No, what, is it, what is it made on? I mean, is it going to damage a vehicle or is it going to stop the vehicle? Usually they're, they're like PVC or something like that and somebody knows that they've hit it but it hasn't scratched up the car. It's a warning system detection system. Swing on chains. Yeah. Stay on chains. Yeah. You try to give it so it gives a lot of flexibility to it so somebody goes, oh, what did I do? You know, so it gives them a chance to recover and back out. It, it, at this angle um, in the lower photo with the bar we were just talking about. Yeah. Is there going to be landscaping in front of the cool? You see there's one tree there. Is there going to be anything else to maybe? Uh, Go back to the landscape plan real quick. Uh, right now, from this side, there are two existing trees. We have some added landscaping in front of the uh, condensing units. OK. And I see maybe a, the little parking lot is there. and, and Yeah. And we did. We did not put anything that. along that way coming through, okay. but we did on the other side of it. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is looking, um, the top one is looking at it from the southwest. Uh, this is basically on grade at the south parking lot. Uh, you see up in the upper left-hand corner, that's where the data center is. The green object is the generator that's there right now. And then you can see the connection into the building. When you go down to the left view, that is looking back from the uh, southeast. Uh, show where the, uh, the, the uh, uh, walkway is. Okay, it's right there. And the data center is right right there, show the retaining wall that's about eight foot tall, which is holding up the west parking lot. And no, that does not have the, doesn't have the landscaping on it, because we, we couldn't, we didn't have enough time to, to bring it up. But it has the berm to the left, and then the, all the landscaping wraps around the bottom of it to the east. And then this is going a little lower at that point. You again see the walkway, data center, and then retaining wall. 
Now the retaining wall, I will tell you one thing. We're going to do a, a liner finish on the outside of it, but we are planting ivy, so eventually that wall will be all green. So that above that retaining wall, there's the additional parking of the west lot. That's the existing west lot, yeah. Gene, have they, with that nice deck, is there any thought of having outdoor dining all summer, meaning? What our intent was is to make that space available so people are having lunch and it's a beautiful sunny day and they want to go out there and sit. Uh, we'll have, you know, chairs and stuff that they can bring out there and, you know, if they want to, you know, sun themselves during lunch or something. Fine. Or if we want to temporarily, you know, set up some table or something and bring it back in or out, we could do that. I just was curious why not just put tables out there all summer now i don't know if that creates a visual thing with the village john well i mean we regulate um what what you can put on your umbrellas which basically means you can't put anything on your umbrellas and okay. and like but i don't think we'd have it's an issue a nice space it would be yeah. nice to i don't think we'd have an issue with it yeah. if you if you think that's proper we could do that sure well, no it was just a thought it, it, your call. okay I think they're, they're going to try to figure out as many uses for it as they can. Let me ask it differently, Kurt. Was there any yeah. thought making it a green roof? Making it what? It a green roof? There was thought, but it's 2,000 square feet, and it just didn't go very far. Is it lit, then? No. So it's not going to be used for entertaining, like at night and things? Not like at that. night, but during day events or late events. I mean, it only can be used during the summer anyhow, where you have, you know, basically from 7 to 8 o'clock at night, you know. Okay. That's really kind of the end of our presentation tonight. The one rendering you don't have is from 60. Um, not from the site of the new lot. Do you have that anywhere? No. The lower left would be the closest one. Because that is 60 from the southeast corner of that new south yeah, lot. That's, that's being an amazingly tall person to get that perspective. But if you, if you look at it, I'll tell you what's going to happen is from the road itself, the berm is seven feet off of where the sidewalk is. And then you put the landscaping on top of it, it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, I would say, 13 feet. But let me phrase it differently. Right now, the way that this building and this site looks and has looked yeah. from 60 is certainly very attractive with the pond and with the building set back with its architecture. And my question really is, now that we're going to put this, what are we calling it? Enclosed lot, walkway or south lot, the yeah. South lot, this bigger one which is going to be effectively in front of the building and next to the pond, yeah. is the, the vista and what you look at when you look at this site going to be substantially broken up and we're going to lose a lot of what really was a architecturally a very nice you know, site? Perpendicular, I don't think you'll even see the lot. Well, right now you see a lot of green space before you get that building. Now you're going to have a, basically a berm. Well, it's going to be a berm, and it's going to be nicely landscaped. I, I think the improvements show in the past, you know, it's going to be a quality job. The, the intent is not to see the lot from 60. The intent is still see a natural environment and tuck the lot in. Now, I understand that, and I, it looks like you're not going to see much of any of the lot, but is it going to change substantially the character of the site, you know, kind of to the west of that pond, and I think it's going to. What's the height of 60 there? If you go by. You have the elevation. The elevation. Go back to. From 60. Yeah. I'm not yet. Go back to the civil plan, see if we can get one off of it. I like these are easy to read. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. Maybe you're younger. Can. You can read it. Let me check. We're looking. See if we can get an elevation mark. 572 there about. Nope. That's right. Oh, that's a width. Oh, never mind. Where is? What is this right here? Oh, I'm trying to find one. No, no, no. This is kind of a. 93, 92, 91, 90, 89. 93, 92. Okay, you're at 88. Else. Right. 84 is the existing under yeah. parking. So here we go. So okay. 
93. It's, uh, we're, we're guessing now, but we think it's 87 to 88 at the street curb, okay. directly across from the lot. And the highest point of the berm is 93. The underside of the parking is 84. 84. We know we have 10 feet clear there. So the underside of the panel of the original building is 94. Wait, I'm confused now. If the highest point of the berm is 93, yep. did I miss here that it's a 13 foot berm? It's a what? Did you say it was 13 feet the berm? No, no. It's, no, I said, it was, I said it's about seven to eight feet. Pardon me? Seven to eight feet. So 87 to, 90, to 93 okay. is six probably about six feet. to seven feet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, with the planning. I'm sorry. So the berm will actually, if you're standing on 60, the berm would, when you look at it, would come up to the bottom of the building. Pretty close, yeah. about a foot or two foot. You just said, about a foot, a foot or two down. feet, yeah. And then when the vegetation grows in there, you're right, you'll just be seeing the, the edge of the base of the building. Well, and, and maybe another way to, to look at this is currently, if you're on 60 or you're, you're on Deer Path looking north, you have this green lawn that gradually increases in height as you get towards the building. And what you're going to see here is that gradual uh, incline um, disappear. It will be gone and what you're doing is that you're pushing this berm down towards the road so the the perception of green will be like this and then there'll be vegetation on top of it. So in essence that that's what you're you're losing the gradual lawn per se um, out along this area. Right, you're moving we, moving we it we over. on the diagram there where your path that's what I was going to ask. Comes today. across. Yeah, I think it's right there. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. 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 Your path is further down. Yeah, and like over there. Oh, that part. It is. Oh, yeah. Your path comes here. I think no, your path right comes, here. I want to say, right about. God, slow down. No. <laughs> Right about here. No, keep no, going. I don't. Is it, are you sure? It's further yeah. down. I think it's further. Is further it here? West. It's further to the west. It's west of your parking lot. It's right there. Yeah, I would say so because you, right can, when I come and see, I can see the corner of that building when I'm coming out on it. Yeah, but I think if you went straight, you'd go into the existing parking lot. Okay. So you might be right. You might be right. Let's see what. No, what's going to happen? I think is with the berm and the vegetation. Today, no disrespect, mm -hmm. but you can see yeah. some of the stuff yeah. behind the building. Yeah. It's going to look nicer because it's going to block all of that. Yeah, I agree. Because there, there is stuff behind the building. Yes. Well, behind meaning to the west. Yes. So, you are correct. Yeah. I see you're adding one light pole to the small lot yeah. to the south. Are you adding any other additional light That's poles? That's it. That's it. To the west it's lot? got a three-headed pole. It's 20 foot tall. So it takes care of, you know, directly where they come in straight and then two pods on each side. And again, we really believe as, as this grows up, you know, the landscape grows up a little bit, you really won't see that, you won't even see it. Okay. And it'll be shielded initially until it grows up. And then on the, on the west lot, is there any um, headlight concerns from cars parking there and shining onto 60 because it is elevated? We've, we've heard from staff there is. And we will solve those. Okay. We will work with staff to resolve those issues. I think that's going to be one of the conditions of approval, anyhow. Okay. Anything else? Okay. I have nothing else. John, am I correct that the fire department? request for walkable fire access from the west parking lot to the lower level driveway and below grade this is we've okayed through our engineering that they've done that um, the discussion has been had with engineering but this is a new um, re request that was um, came out of a discussion I had with the fire department last week so the engineering plans will have to be modified um, your plans and your packet do not reflect that request although as we see on the site plan tonight they do um, they've added that to the right. plant, so. Um, but so this that, hasn't been looked at. Uh, not, not specifically. I did have a verbal conversation with Dave, and and he thought it would work grade wise, uh, and the like. We just haven't seen it in a plan form. Fair enough. Okay. Anybody else? How is entry made 
I pull into the west parking lot, yeah, can I just walk into this access? Yeah, show them where, if you parked over there in that lot, show them, Robert, where you'd go. So I don't have to be an employee, I can just walk right in. Mm -mm. It's badged. You know, card access. Okay. That's what I went in here. Yeah. Mm. And that's right at the entry to the walkway. Yeah. else okay anything you want to add no thank you very much for the time okay um, as you are aware we have a standing motion to recommend approval and this evening's motion would be a motion to recommend approval to amend the approved site and landscaping plan and building elevations to allow for the construction of an enclosed walkway from the west parking lot to the existing office building construction of a data center building and expansion of the west parking lot subject to the following conditions first our general general compliance with the plans we've been provided secondly final approval of plans by the director of public works village engineer and landscape architect thirdly um, we have the petitioner shall work with the fire department and director of public works village engineer to provide a walkable fire access from the west parking lot the lower level driveway and below grade parking area, which we've heard you've started but just not been finalized with the engineering and fire department. D, the new plant material to be added to the entire length of the existing west parking lot and the village landscape tech shall review and approve the type of plant materials prior to installation and to be completed prior to issuance of final certificate of occupancy for the walkway and data center. Uh, e, petitioner shall provide a material sample board to the building commissioner which I see we've seen at the time of submission for review and finally F compliance with all their ordinances and standards of the village yes okay we need a second for that second any discussion on this just a comment I would make I think it's good to see that as Rustoleum is growing that Rustoleum and RPM have decided to invest in this site I mean they're adding a lot of high paying jobs in that facility and Gene I don't know since in the last few years it's got to be probably at least 50 to 75 or more so it's really great to see them investing in the building so I think it's wonderful I agree mm -hmm. else? did I understand uh, one of the comments in the packet <coughs> seemed to indicate that you are actually don't need the parking you're just adding it to no no we, we we are deficient in the parking but we are decreasing our deficiency overall as it is today. No, I don't mean as to compared to requirement. I mean as to your use. Do you need additional parking? Let's see how many. How yes, many cases I'll answer the question. Yeah, um, with what the square footage that they've added, um, they were required to add. No, no, no. no I'm the, not talking about ordinance. I'm just no. talking about with do they we the have user yeah, need more parking. With the improvement, we have 297 spaces, and. Presently, we have 264 employees. So yes, we have more parking than the employment. Just building additional to come closer to meeting code. Yeah. Well, we, we want to improve. We want to improve our our, uh, our deficiency. There's no doubt. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. We need a roll call vote. Mr. Ballou. Yes. Ms. Cotton. Mr. Hesner. Mr. Heidner. Yes. Mr. Mulcrown? Yes. Mr. Gorog? Yes. Chairman Morris? Yes. Five yeas, no nays. Um, recommendation carries. Um, we will look to bring this to the village board um, in two weeks, I believe. Okay. So for further consideration. You hope to have this done before the snow flies? Is yep. that sort of the goal? We're pushing it. You've done a lot of legwork with Dave Brown on this, so, and that's that's the biggest issue that they've got really, um, site related and stormwater related issues. So, okay. Yes. No. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have a discussion of the Port Clinton Place revised concept plan for remaining vacant. Um, I, in your packet is a copy of the uh, conceptual uh, site plan for the Port Clinton Place. Uh, project which was um, originally developed by Opus North and is now um, with Opus uh, Opus Group. Um, when the economy went um, where it, the way it did, there was a number of consolidations within the Opus Corporation, and um, they retained this property. 
um, and have come back with a revised land plan along with uh, residential plans that would take this plan from um, condos and townhomes to uh, luxury market rate apartments um, in both of these buildings. Building A is uh, uh, currently undergoing a number of revisions and considerations. The latest iteration of that plan shows uh, the uh, five-story building over one-story of parking. Um, they uh, show 74 units in this building. Um, I'm anticipating that this building is likely going to go under further uh, changes and, and possible reductions in size. So, um, but that's the general footprint. This is proposed to be built in the footprint that was approved as a part of this larger PUD. Um, the parking lot, as you see here on the site plan, is, again, the same footprint um, as was approved with the original PUD. Uh, in fact, there's a base, base coat right now of asphalt out there, so you can actually see that that uh, parking lot as it is configured today. Um, I will note that on uh, North South Road here, which is on the site plan, also known as Burn Boulevard, um, that hatched area there at the corner um, is actually uh, emergency access. So there is not a direct connection to um, that road, but it, that is provided for emergency access in case there was ever an issue with getting access to the north or from the north. Um, building B, 43-unit um, uh, apartment building again, um, designed um, elevational, uh, the elevational profile of that building is designed to be in character with the existing townhomes um, that are located to the west. Um, you can see a conceptual rendering of that inside your packet. Um, the, the plan sets up very well to um, help accent and emphasize the entrance into this portion of the development at the intersection of 45 and Town Center Road. Um, and is a different configuration in terms of, of what you see out there, again, reflected on, on the uh, condo or the townhomes to the west. But in the same respect, it provides its own set of characteristics that um, I think will be a blend from uh, architecturally from what you, what was originally approved um, to what this building will ultimately look like. So um, really lays out well. Um, the scale is very similar to, again, those existing buildings to the west um, and uh, really provides some architectural interest in that, in the uh, overall concept. So um, you can see the elevations um, in flat form, as I like to call it, two pages back. And you can see it. And that's for that uh, building B. Okay. The, um, building, the building B that you're looking at mm -hmm. there, if you go to the second page from the back, it doesn't have a number. It shows the garages. Are these apartments or are yes. these? They are apartments. They're not a, a, like the garages in the townhome with up above it, right? Correct. So the, the garages are provided as, mm -hmm. as an, a rental option. As a tenant, you have the option of renting those spaces for additional. But there are don't. not enough for all apartments. But they and they don't enter the building; they just are there. Um, you know what? I haven't seen a floor plan. I would imagine that they do enter into the building, okay. um, into a common hallway that would be behind them. Um, they would have some limited storage, probably. But there's only a finite number of those okay. um, that are available. Um, and this is traditionally what we've seen in the Oaks um, project that we just got done reviewing, similar type of concept. Those were townhouses, though. No, uh, well, no, remember, it was a combination. Right. Um, right. Townhomes had their own garages, and then oh, the 32-unit right. buildings yeah. had some type of garage. 10 or 12. Right. Yeah. This just looked so much like the townhouses, that's why I was wondering if it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and that was the, what the intent was here. Yeah. Um, that, that is exactly what the intent was, so that, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, what this will likely require is an amendment of the PUD um, that that you all have seen in the past, and I think I kind of walked through a little bit of that in in my information in your packet. Um, so we will likely have to reopen the public hearing and review um, the architecture for both buildings, um, the density for both buildings, and then the revisions to the site plan uh, and landscape plans for both buildings themselves. So. Um, 
like I said, I just want to get you up to speed on this. The plan has been presented to the committee as a whole. Um, they are satisfied with the density that was proposed here um, and the overall uh, concept as, as you see here. And they've been directed to go back to technical review um, and then ultimately come back before you guys at some point um, in the future. I th uh, think this development would be different than, is it the Oaks, the one on 45? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yep. Is there enough demand for all of these? I mean, the, the one at the Oaks, I think, is probably higher end from, of course, we're not seeing a lot here, mm -hmm. yeah, but is, is there enough demand so that these don't remain like half full? Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of demand for rental in this area. Um, these will be market rate, which means you'll be looking at numbers in the neighborhood of 1400 to $1,800 a month on the rent. Um, again, higher for those who may take advantage of the, uh, uh, the garages. Um, Taxman's, Taxman's building to the, to the east of this, uh, 85 units, I believe, is full and that has a waiting list. Question. Okay. Has a waiting list. Um, the okay. existing building, the six-story building in the back, 66 units. Um, they sold six or seven of those units, and the remainder of them are rentals. Um, again, 100% full. Um, larger units, different concept. Yep larger units, but again, 100% full. So the belief is that there is actually a very strong market for this type of, of uh, opportunity here, so. And then with that, I can answer any other questions. I'm anxious to hear of the existing townhome owners, if they have any, I mean, it's a great, I like those townhomes. They, they, yeah. They look great. I, and really, they're far enough from everything. It mm -hmm. isn't going to matter. But. Well, and I think I think what we'll be working on is obviously refining the landscaping and making sure that the transitional area between the two works. Um, you know, there was always going to be residential units adjacent to them. And in this instance, there were 27 additional townhomes that were going to be built over here. Um, what they're proposing is 43. So you got an additional 16 units going in next door. Uh, it's a different configuration. They're not owner-occupied, so you're not competing. If you're selling your unit, you're not competing against new units coming on the market. Um, so there is some, some positives there. Um, it is a different type of unit, though. And so. there was going to be residents there anyway. You're right. So. Yeah, yeah. So. Now, you described, uh, sorry. You <laughs> described in what was happening with, Building B essentially going from 27 owned units to 43 rental units. Right. How about the story on building A? Uh, again, it's, it'll be a rental building. Right, um, but how, are we increasing the density as well there? Well, the original building was 66 units, um, so it's going up by eight, eight units. Um, and they're reconfiguring the interior space. Um, again, I, I wouldn't get too hung up on uh, building A right now because they're still working on refinements of that building, so I expect that to change. And is that, it looks like it's one story shorter than the existing uh, building. Is that the case? That is the case. And, you know, they'll have, in this plan they showed um, underground parking and at-grade parking and then residential above it, so. Other um, than that, is it the same? General art building? It's intended to be. So when you walk into the first floor, are you walking into the garage? You're into a lobby. Into a lobby. Yeah, and then there's parking on the ground floor around that. So you'd likely have two access points, one from the garage and one from the, the parking lot coming in from the outside. That would be your central core where you would then hit the elevators to go to the next levels. Okay. When, when we talk about their desire in this drawing, the, the buildings look like they go together really well. Mm -hmm. Yep. N not related to this, but the other apartment building that's a little further east, mm -hmm. they took away some of the designs on that and it's just a very plain yes, building. Know. This won't be the same? No, okay. I, I will guarantee that. I mean, because it would look awkward next to the existing one, plus the existing one looks nicer than the one that's kind of plain. Right. Well, they went back and they put a cornice around the top of the parapet wall, so that helped a oh. little bit. Um, the, the, and I realized it was financial and... It, right, and the top of the building is okay, um, and it works, and it is a very nice building inside. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, we didn't get the top done the way we we needed to so if this 
is done like the other one, it'll look really nice. Well, and, and remember, B is a three-story building, and again, comparable in scale to the to the townhomes, and will be very comparable in materials and quality that that building uh, has. A, um, again, we'll finish it all the way to the top, and it will... That's a promise. We're going to hold it. Yeah. Okay. No, you can. <laughs> so. so. So now in B, when we're increasing the number of units, mm -hmm. has the parking proportionally increased? Yeah. Sure, um, and, and not the ratio per se, but just the numbers. The, the ratio is looking at about 2.3 uh, spaces per unit. So that's right on the ordinance requirement. And that was something that was really set forth by the board. You got to nail that parking ratio, so. So um, I don't have a time frame in terms of when you'll see this. If I, if I had to guess, I would say probably after the first of the year um, if they can if they continue on the same path that they're looking at right now they'd like to do construction sometime in late spring and work on a 12-month construction process with occupancy what's the timetable on the oaks uh 24 month it's a 24 month construction process remember they've got um 12, 13 buildings, something like that. And I would assume they're much, them in phases. Much larger site. Right, right. Um, the infrastructure is in already here. I was just wondering if they were going to be competing with each other directly. Oh, um, sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely will. You know, all the rentals in this area will be competing um, with that. And so, there, yeah, there's no doubt about that. And the occupancy, you wouldn't know the occupancy of the Amley building, would you? Uh, it runs in the low to mid 90s and quite honestly that's the way they like it because they can rotate people in and out and they have to be they can be able to uh, um, they have vacancies when you need it so they're not a hundred percent full but that's I think that's the way they operate so they're doing very well actually very well Okay. Other, if you, anybody other questions, or if you have questions, you want to email me. I'd be happy to answer them. We'll see these as we come along. Okay. Um, just, just so, just so you know, um, Jeff's firm it does this, so Jeff will not be participating in that discussion um, once we go to the formal consideration. Is that why they look like they've been done in crayon? No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We have approval of the minutes of June 12, 2013, which are in our packets. Uh, we have a motion to approve. a second. I'll second. Any discussion on that? Okay. Hearing no, we need that by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. Anybody Abstain. opposed? Abstain. Me too. We weren't here. Okay. So, okay. Let's do a roll call. That will make it easy on John. <laughs> Mr. Ballou. Abstain. Ms. Cotton. Mr. Hesner. Uh, Mr. Heidner. Yes. Mr. Mulcrown? Yes. Mr. Gorog? Present. <laughs> I'll abstain. He's abstaining. <laughs> no, you can do present. Uh, Chairman Morris? I have to abstain Nine. too, but it still passes. I know, I could tell. I wasn't there either. Okay. But it still passes because they're like passes. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about? Um, we'll, back in. we'll see you in two weeks. Um, th that item will be the bus company, uh, first student bus company up on Butterfield Road, uh, rezoning. Um, zoning code amendments to allow a truck uh, truck terminal truck operation so you'll look at um, a site plan um, landscaping plan zoning code amendments that will allow various uses similar to what has gone on in the last 40 years up there um, and um, um, there will be some public testimony I anticipate from the Greg's Landing folks um, we've had an ongoing conversation with them for a while so uh, a lot of people know what's going on already, but um, um, so it'll be an interesting uh, uh, event. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so we have a motion to adjourn. We need a second. Second. Yeah, we can do the acclamation. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we oppose to that. Okay, we're adjourned. Good night. Thank you.